Hello everybody, Anton here from Dropship Lifestyle, and I wanted to hop on quick and make a video speaking on five challenges that I personally have dealt with with dropshipping, specifically as I got started and started to scale up my dropshipping stores. Now, I've dealt with way more than five challenges, probably have five challenges a week, but what I realized as I thought about this is that most of the challenges that stuck with me they weren't even the biggest ones, but they were the ones that happened earliest on when I really had no idea what to expect. These are things that, you know, to me came out of nowhere and to me had me feeling like it was the end of the world, meaning the end of my businesses. So what I thought I would do is share these with you today and hopefully you can learn something from them, um, if not specifically for each challenge, just with the mindset overall. And just I hope you can walk away from this video knowing that no matter what you do, challenges can and will come up and you need to do your best. I know it's hard, but your best to realize that most of them are not the end of the world. Every Everything can be dealt with and you will come out the other side okay and stronger for what you have learned. So the first challenge I want to share is definitely the one that stuck with me the most and it was the one that hit me the hardest at the time. Now this is probably back in 2009 or 2010 and it was specifically regarding PayPal. I'm sure everybody has heard horror stories about PayPal. We still do use them. We still do accept them. We've processed probably tens of millions of dollars through them. So overall, I think it's worth using them. But what happened to me early on when I first got into e-commerce is I was using only a merchant account to process transactions. I think I was using Chase Payment Tech back then, which is just their like merchant services, which basically means people could buy things on my online stores. They would be the ones that make sure the money goes from their credit card or their debit card and goes to my business bank account. Now, all was fine and well, growing the business, growing the business, growing the business, doing, you know, over a million dollars a year. And then I don't know why, but deciding one day, you know what, we should add PayPal as a checkout option in addition to letting people use a credit card or a debit card. So signed up for a PayPal business account, added it to my online store as a way to check out and started having people buy through PayPal. And what happened is our conversion rates actually went up, meaning more website visitors were turning into customers, which is why even though they can be problematic, I think it's worth having PayPal. But what happened is because the PayPal account was so new and because the amount of volume going through it got so big so fast is that it triggered some kind of flag or warning in their account, their internal account, saying, hey, this account is doing too much volume. Their risk profile is too great for us. So before we all just hate on PayPal, uh, I do want to explain knowing now like why that happens and, and you know the reason for it. So basically what PayPal saw, again, was a brand new account, my account at the time, and a ton of volume, meaning sales and money going through it. And to them, from their risk team, what they think is, okay, let's say this guy, Anton, goes ahead and takes out all his money from PayPal to his bank account, then goes to his bank and takes out all of the money from the bank, and then never ships products to customers. And then all of the customers complain to PayPal and file chargebacks, and PayPal has to basically refund them all. And then PayPal tries to get the money from me. And again, at that point, I'm long and gone, right? That's their worst case scenario, their hypothetical. And that's what their risk team is trying to protect against. And because our PayPal account had no history, there was no way for them to know, you know, are this, is this company going to be around, what is it now, 13 years later, like we are, or is this company going to, again, you know, take the money and run. So from their team, it was too much money too fast. And what they did was say, we're holding all the money that is currently in your PayPal account in the PayPal balance, which at that time, I don't remember the exact numbers. I think it was just over $50,000. And they said, we're going to hold it for six months. 180 days and after that assuming you don't have refunds and whatnot you know you can withdraw it now what that did to me at the time was massive because when you're you know in e-commerce you don't sell a product for a thousand and make a thousand we try to maintain 30 percent margins meaning if we sell a product for a thousand we want to be able to net meaning keep 300 and now fifty thousand dollars plus of mine that literally profits plus money i needed was with paypal
So at that point, I didn't know what I was gonna do. I, at that time, I was actually still importing. So I had huge containers coming from China that I had to pay for. We were scaling ads aggressively because they work, but now $50,000 of cash was off the table. Uh, again, when I first saw that, I really thought that was it, like I'm, I'm done. What happened in reality was we really had to scale back with how much we were importing because the cash flow just wasn't there, meaning we could sell less because we had less access to products, and meaning that our advertising efforts had had to scale down greatly. So for about six months, our business actually decreased, not because we didn't have a great business with buyers and traffic, but because our profits were locked up and even more than profits. So that was really scary. Again, got through it. Um, wanted to share that because at the time, again, I thought like, this is it, I'm done. But what I wanna share with you, and you know, I guess what I would have done looking back, knowing what I know now, when I first set up that PayPal account, the first thing would be not use it as much, not just start it, and you know, from month one, have 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, $50,000 of sales going through it. Instead, try to limit it. So maybe not offer it as frequently. Maybe literally I would do this, like not add it to the order form every week of the month. Maybe add it, get maybe $5,000 of sales through it. Okay, now remove PayPal, you know, make sure all those orders are fine, add it back a month later, maybe get $10,000 through it. Okay, remove it, add it back and build up the account that way. Something else that I definitely wish I would have done and something I recommend everybody do is withdraw the money from your PayPal balance. Do not keep huge balance balances in PayPal. You can literally transfer money from PayPal to your bank account as often as you want. And as soon as we got our account back, I started doing that at the end of every business day. So if anything happened again, at least they wouldn't just say we're holding you know, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars. So those two things would have really helped me there. And uh, again, that's what I would do if I was just starting over with PayPal to avoid that challenge. Now, the second challenge that I dealt with was going back to those days of me getting products from China and bringing them into the States. And this one, people still deal with all the time with drop shipping, especially the people out there that drop ship from China, which as you should know, I don't recommend. Um, I'll put a link where up here that explains why, but yeah, don't drop ship from China. But when I was actually importing from China, what would happen occasionally is we would have huge containers with products that we pre-sold coming in, and maybe they were going to New Jersey at points or Long Beach in California, and we would have you know the estimated arrival date from when the container left China. And then we would, you know, off those estimates based on, okay, this is when it's gonna arrive, this is when it's gonna ship to our customers. Well, what I didn't realize early on is there are shipping delays. Sometimes there is terrible weather, literally out in the middle of the ocean, and these container ships have to change their routes. Sometimes the ports are so backed up that something might get delayed and a huge container ship might have to sit out there in the ocean for two, three, four extra days. Um, I, I don't know if this is how it works now. This is definitely how it was back in you know, 2007, eight, nine, 10, 11, when I was importing heavily. And because of this, what happened is we would have our previous estimated ship dates for our customers. And then maybe there'd be a storm, you know, not all the time, but occasionally where now that ship is coming in two weeks later. By the time it gets to the port, it's so backed up because everybody was rerouted that now there's another two week delay and customers would get angry. And when customers already pay you and then they're angry, it's a problem, especially when you cannot do anything about it so for me, a big challenge early on was that ocean freight. And honestly, it's one of the big reasons I don't recommend international shipping. And I definitely don't recommend drop shipping from China. Now, the third challenge that really stuck with me, like one specific instance, also involves shipping delays, but it was domestic. So US to US. And this one actually happened when I was first getting into drop shipping and starting to transition from importing to drop shipping. And what happened is we had, you know, one of many customers that placed an order for a lot of money, thousands of dollars, and we had their shipping address and the product was shipping and we sent them the tracking number. And I was actually at a trade show. I remember I was at a trade show for one of the niches I was in back then. And I got a call on the business line back when I was still doing customer service. And it was from the customer of this specific order. And they were saying, I have my tracking number. It was supposed to be delivered today. And now it says something like, you know, I don't, it, this is, 
10 years ago, so I don't remember the specifics, but something like two or three days later. And they didn't just say it like that and like, can you help? They said it screaming, like infuriated. And I went from like the highest of highs, being at one of my first ever trade shows, talking to all my suppliers, meeting new vendors, networking with the industry, and then getting screamed at by this person who was hysterical. And the reason they were, which I found out from them, is the home where the products were being delivered was not their main home. It was a vacation home in Florida, and they were there for a specific window on vacation and they needed the products to be delivered while they were there to receive them. And now because of whatever happened with the shipping company that was out of my control, that wasn't going to happen. And I felt so bad about this, you know, one, because I couldn't do anything to help, two, because I saw how angry these people were, and three, because this was the first time I ever experience that, like somebody just taking out all their frustration. Again, they were justifiably frustrated. I don't think they spoke to me, the, you know, justifiably, but uh, yeah, just like so, so nasty and just game changing. And again, took me from the highest of highs to like the lowest feeling of lows. Um, the reason I wanted to share this one really is just for, for a couple of reasons. The, the main one is I can't even give you a fix. Like at that point, I was doing customer service. I almost just had to take it from this person. And at the end of the day, what happened is they just had a neighbor receive the package a few days later. So it was, you know, I guess as close to fine as it could be at the end of the day. But all I can share with you, you know, regarding this challenge is that when you're selling on Online, you're going to be selling to everybody and anybody. Some people might have great demeanors and be respectful and nice and try to work with you and be understanding. Some people might freak out, again, even if there's a problem, like some people handle it differently. And it doesn't mean that you're done. It doesn't mean that you're the worst person, especially when it's something outside of your control, like a shipping company having to change the way a package is being routed or something. So just know the challenge was that I felt like I was done, I felt terrible about myself, but what's gonna happen in business is people are occasionally gonna get mad, again, occasionally justifiably so, and what you can take from that is just do your best, don't get angry, be as nice as you can be, try to solve the problem to the best of your ability, Sometimes there are problems that are unsolvable, but they are the minority in the grand scheme of things. Things like this will come up. It's the nature of doing business, especially when you have other companies like FedEx and UPS and DHL that are shipping and you're not the one you know, driving to their home telling them I'm definitely gonna be there. So again, it's the minority, it will come up. It's not the end of the world. Um, and the main tip I can give you is don't take it too personally. Just take what you can from it to try to improve and use that going forward. But don't give up. Don't get too down on yourself because you'll bounce back really, really fast. So the fourth dropshipping challenge I want to share with you, which is something I didn't know how to deal with early on, is bad suppliers. And you will find bad suppliers. Ideally, you're a member of my coaching program, Dropship Lifestyle, and you see how we basically rank them and do our research up front. Um, if you are, by the way, I'll link to the training on that in the description. And if you're watching this and you're not a member of Dropship Lifestyle, I would highly encourage you to go to this page. I'll post a link up on the screen. You can register here for a free training from me where I also make a special offer on my coaching program, the Dropship Blueprint, which by the way, Voted best e-commerce course by Shopify, only course to ever get this award. Thank you, Shopify. Thank you to all our members. But back to the, the point of this challenge and how I dealt with it. What happened in the beginning when I first transitioned from importing to drop shipping is I would just try to get approved with any and every supplier, of course, in my niches. And what I would do is upload all their products, run ads, get sales. And what I would start to notice over time is trends where some suppliers, every time a customer received it, I would get a positive review or I just wouldn't hear back, but all was well. Then I noticed some suppliers, you know, a week later, we'd get an email from the customer saying, hey, I haven't received my order yet. We would check with the supplier. They wouldn't even respond. They would say, oh yeah, we're gonna ship it in a couple days. And all these kind of policies and things I took for granted and how to run a business just fell through the cracks. So what ended up happening is maybe 5% of my overall suppliers are what I would classify as bronze suppliers. They just didn't care about their businesses. They didn't know how to run a business right. And this hurt me because now I had a portion of my customers that were frustrated based on I don't wanna say things outside of my control because these were my suppliers, but based on things that I wasn't aware of enough. And the problem and what you could take away from this 
is that I let it go too long. I would think, okay, maybe this supplier just messed up this order. Okay, maybe they were just really busy this week. And I would let, you know, months go by with some suppliers where the service and the action on their part just wasn't there. So my advice to you is, first of all, follow how I show you how to get good suppliers in the dropship blueprint. But if you find yourself in a situation where some of your suppliers, you could just tell are not you know, up to your standard of doing business, just remove them from your store sooner rather than later. It is not worth the hassle. It is not worth the headaches. Just cut them sooner rather than later. That's one thing I wish I did differently looking back. Now, the fifth dropshipping challenge I wanna share with you is something I've talked about before. So I'll actually, I'm gonna to link to a video I did on this, but it is customer service. Now, I actually got into e-commerce because of this book, The 4-Hour Workweek, which to its credit does talk about hiring virtual assistants and building teams that can help to manage everything. But in the beginning, I didn't take that part away, unfortunately. What I took away is I can make money from my online business, I can go and play golf all day, and then I can you know, work 15 minutes a night without any supporting tools or automations or teams. And because of that, our customer service was for the first couple of years in business, minimal. It was, you know, maybe in the morning, emails get responded to, maybe in the evenings. If the phone rings during the day, nobody's answering it. Maybe you'll get a call back, you know, when I'm done on the golf course, right? And for years, like it was probably two or three years, I refused to hire anybody, even though at this point, doing like $2 million plus a year in revenue still was not hiring, or doing this all myself, not hiring anybody to do it. And the reason I you know, justified this is I don't want anybody else talking to our customers. I can handle this better than anybody else. And that was one of the worst decisions I could have made because literally the day that I hired the first employee to handle customer service, everything changed. Phone calls were answered when they came in, more orders were closed, email tickets were responded to within 30 minutes to an hour, sales went up, customers were happier, and for years I struggled with this myself simply because I didn't want anybody else to touch it or see it because I thought I could do it better. So a big challenge for me there with customer service was delegating and trusting people, I would say. But uh, yeah, that was a big challenge, it was a big mistake, and ever since I uh, shifted that, now we have a team of, um, it changes because it grows like crazy. I think we have between 10 and 15 people right now all over the world that handle customer service for our businesses. They do amazing, our customers are happier than ever, and it's something I wish I would have started doing very early on. So uh, that's it for this episode, guys. I thought it was gonna be like five minutes long, definitely longer than I was expecting, but I hope you got value from it. If you did, give the video a like, be sure to subscribe and click that bell. And if you're brand new and you wanna know how to start a highly profitable semi-automated store. Again, I'm going to post the link up on the screen right now. You can click it and go here where I have a free training that'll get you started on the path to dropshipping success. So check that out. And again, thank you. I appreciate you. And I will talk to you in the next video. See everybody.